Ramadan, the time of spiritual reflection and worship, a time of patience, humility, self-discipline, and submissiveness to God. During the holy month, Radio Sultanate of Oman, 90.4 FM, takes you on a journey, journey from spiritual reflection and enlightenment to family entertainment. Join us all day and all night long here on the Nation Station. Radio Sultanate of Oman, 90.4 FM, is all set to bring you Let's Connect. Let's Connect. A soul searching program which is about a journey of self discovery hosted by Reem. 12 noon to 1 p.m., Sunday to Thursday. Send your questions to 90406 or call us at 246 02058. Let's Connect here on the Nation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Peace be with you all. Welcome to Let's Connect, your Ramadan ready program. Let's Connect in this season of Ramadan focuses on values, understanding values and how to live them so that we may improve our growth, our character and society and nation inshallah. Yesterday on Let's Connect, we spoke about cooperation, working together and being able to listen, connect and accommodate and reach out to one another. If you missed that episode, you'll find it online at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash 321connect. That's the number three, the number two, the number one, and the word connect, C-O-N-N-E-C-T. This is Reem Audir, along with Al Faray, with you together throughout this blessed month of Ramadan, inshallah. We're now live on the air daily from Sunday to Thursday, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. You can call us in at the number 2460-2058. That's 2460-2058. Ali, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Ali? Good, I'm doing good. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Did you memorize the phone number? Uh, um, do <laughs> it's I been memorize, a few days saying do it. Do I memorize my own phone number? <laughs> I think I actually memorized it. 24602058. Now, today's value has to do with the quality of being dependable, trustworthy. And of course, we all love and appreciate those qualities. It is where a quality that enables people to count on you and you can count on yourself too. So the value of today, Adi? Integrity. Integrity indeed, integrity, a value that we aspire to fulfill in our lives and in different contexts. So let's dig in and understand the concept of integrity. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Integrity means doing the right thing at all times and in all circumstances, whether anyone is watching or not. It takes a courage to do the right thing, no matter what the consequences will be. Integrity is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. It is generally a personal choice to uphold oneself to consistently moral and ethical standards. Mm -hmm. The word integrity comes from the same Latin root as integer and implies a wholeness mm -hmm. of a person. When somebody has integrity, you just know it and they just have it. There's nothing mysterious about integrity. Living with integrity is way of being uh, the world that you can practice and master. Uh, it's a set of skills that you can work on and improve. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, you can have a tremendous positive impact, not only uh, on your own life, but on the lives of, uh, of those around you, mm -hmm. even of, of the culture in which yes. you live. Yes. So living with integrity is not something that you have, it is something that you do. One does not come into the world with integrity ready-made. Mm -hmm. And a commitment to living with integrity involves adopting a few general principles that can serve as a guidepost to moral decision-making. Uh, and there are, you, you decide to value what is true, 
Uh, it is also to strive to understand yourself and the world. It is to understand others, which requires empathy. Mm -hmm. It is to know what you value. It is to know what you believe. So when you feel ashamed or disappointed, that's when you're actually practicing the value of integrity. And But when you feel ashamed or disappointed, that is an alarm to you. It's like that, a wake-up call yeah, in a way. Mm -hmm. It is telling you that mm -hmm. you are waking off, you know, we're walking off track mm -hmm. and you need to get back on track. So you start monitoring yourself when you yeah. do that. And it's, it's beautiful because in essence, it's about being true to your values, being true to your principles. And it's something that you first internalize in you, in your heart, and then you manifest it in your daily lives, mm -hmm. in your interactions. And the whole concept of integrity as well is even when no one is watching and, you know, whether someone, you know, believes in the creation or whatever, regards of their religious beliefs, but even when no one's watching, that you still remain true to your values and principles. Mm -hmm. And in our case, we remember that God is watching us. Regardless of context, we still remain true to those values and to the decisions we make as well through those values. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and you just reminded me when you said uh, God is watching. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a show called uh, Big Brother? or uh -huh. you know, Yes. It's like there's a camera that is watching you, whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. So when we live our life with integrity, this is what we need to think of. It's like there's a camera watching mm -hmm. us. Yes. Yeah. So and, and our you know the, the, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't need camera for that, but it's it's the belief. Yes. If we had that belief that Allah is watching us. That consciousness. That's when we practice. Yeah. And that that takes me to uh give you an understanding of uh, integrity in Islam. Uh and there are actually two concepts in Islam mm -hmm. that among others define our understanding of integrity and they are purity and wholeness. Mm -hmm. Purity is the Islamic understanding, uh, the, the Islamic understanding of purity bases itself on the concept of fitrah, uh, the, the innate purity, mm -hmm. the, the, the natural, born with, yes. yeah, born, the natural disposition of the human being. Mm -hmm. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, referring to this natural state of the human being, mentioned that every newborn child is born in the state of innate purity, but then his parents make him become what they want him to become. So integrity in Islam refers to the restoration and maintenance of that natural mm -hmm. state of purity. And it's, it's connecting to it and tapping back into it. Mm -hmm. That innate goodness that everyone has. Yeah, yes. that, that's the first concept, which is purity. Uh, the second concept, which uh, is wholeness. It, it is fair to say that, complete, that, you know, that completeness is the theme of Islam. Mm -hmm. It has been perfected by God. Prophet Muhammad والسلام, said, my likeness and the likeness of the prophets before me is the likeness of a person who built a house and made it complete and beautiful, except the place of a brick in a corner. Mm -hmm. So people began to go around it and, and wonder at it and say, why has not that this brick, this brick has been placed? And then Prophet Muhammad والسلام, said, I am that brick and I am the last of the prophets. Mm -hmm. Subhanallah. That, that, that shows the perfection in religion yes. and Allah Almighty actually announced the final perfection of his revelation to mankind when he said this day I have perfected my favor upon you and have chosen for you Islam as your religion so integrity in Islam indicates the fullest manifestation of human essence the wholeness is achieved by bringing human attributes and capabilities in agreement with human function and purpose Mm -hmm. In other words, you don't have contradictions inside of you. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes that's when we see people either going through doubt or, you know, shame or unsure is because they're contradicting themselves yeah. and, and they're not clear. And then as you, you know, we've mentioned is attaining that sense of purity is about connecting to your goodness. Mm -hmm. And when you feel whole is because your conscious is at ease. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not acting one way with some person or another way with another or, or different uh, context. And there's, there's these uh, value cards um, mm. that that share as well each time like a concept related to a value, and I saw that these had a value Where on. Where did you get integrity. that card from? Actually, from a workshop. Mm, <laughs> excellent. And so this is how integrity was described. Within you are a number of personalities, and when they work together in harmony, you are integrated. 
And this kind of reminds me that, yes, yeah, sometimes, you know, we have that part of us that kind of wants to pull us in the wrong direction or to do something. Mm. We know it's, it's not good for another or it's just personal interest. And so it's able to reconcile and connect to that goodness and be in harmony in, in the choices that we make. Mm -hmm. Being true to yourself makes you powerful in a natural and effortless way. People sense your level of honesty and principle and respond accordingly. Wisdom guides you to deepen your self-knowledge, raise your consciousness, and express your truth. You will become a beacon and people will respect and honor you. At all times, maintain your own standards, regardless of those around you. Sincerity ultimately prevails. And it's so important to start by being true with mm. who you are. And it's, it's important that you have that awareness, you understand who you are. You're not portraying as well a certain mask or a certain personality. Mm. And uh, you might still be a dependable person, but perhaps when you interact, you know, they see, oh, this person is now acting on different principles or, yeah. or so what does the person believe in? What's their standards? And, and the idea is even when we interact with people of different, um, different backgrounds, beliefs and principles, we are true to what we stand for mm -hmm. and we, we don't hide it. We discuss it. We open up with it. And it's that sense of as well, respecting one another. I think mm -hmm. with integrity comes that sense of having respect for yourself yeah, and also self uh, respect towards the others. Yeah. And actually in integrity is the opposite of hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. uh, according to the prophet, uh, peace be upon him, I thought so, mm -hmm. uh, the signs of a hypocrite uh, are three. Mm -hmm. Whenever he speaks, he tells a lie, and whenever he promises, he breaks his promise, and whenever he is entrusted, he betrays. Mm -hmm. So, in order for us, you know, to live with integrity, we need to be with those who are honest and truthful, mm -hmm. not hypocrites. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "O oh believers, do not stray from the path of God, and be with those who are truthful." Ya ayyuhaladina amanu taqulaha wa kunu ma sadiqin. Be with them. Be mm -hmm. with the truthful people. It impacts you, those you spend the most uh, time yeah. with. Yes, yeah, yeah. it impacts you. And also the, um, the concept of integrity as well is when you also see something that is not right and wrong, that you don't just keep to yourself and say, you know, everything is fine in my life. It's okay. Um, if we see, for example, social injustice or mm. um, if you see someone that is in need of help, you actually reach out. And this brings us to the Prophet Sallallahu <laughs> Hadith. It says, Whosoever, whoever of you sees a wrong, let him change it with his hand. In other words, taking action. Mm -hmm. And if he is not able to do that, then let him change it with his tongue. Mm -hmm. In other words, we might speak up about it, create awareness. And if he is not able to do so, then with his heart. And that is the weakest of faith. And this is a beautiful, beautiful saying of the Prophet because it reminds us والسلام, to be true to our principles and values, not just in our life, everything is going well within our own world, mm -hmm. but also the world of others, also the life of others. You know, yeah. if, and it's not, and this mentions it in order that what is preferred. First, if you can take action, you can contribute, that's even better. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's a situation where someone cannot do that. Or if they do that, they might get attacked or jeopardize the, their families. And we have a break and we'll be back. Our listeners, now it's time for a call to prayers, Adhan al-Dhuhr. According to the local timing, 
of Muscat and its suburbs. Those who reside outside Muscat Governorate have to notice the difference in timing. Radio Sultanate of Oman. spiritual reflection and worship, a time of patience, humility, self-discipline, and submissiveness to God. During the holy month, Radio Sultanate of Oman 90.4 FM takes you on a journey, journey from spiritual reflection and enlightenment to family entertainment. Join us all day and all night long. Here on the Nation Station. Radio Sultan of Oman 90.4 FM is all set to bring you Let's Connect. Let's Connect. A soul searching program which is about a journey of self discovery hosted by Reem. 12 noon to 1 p.m. Sunday to Thursday. Send your questions to 90406 or call us at 246-02058. Let's connect here on the Nation Station. Welcome back to Let's Connect, your Ramadan radio program. We're live on the air. You can call us in at the number 2460-2058. Today's topic is on the value of integrity. And before the break, we were sharing um, the concept of integrity and Ali shared examples of Islam uh, and how integrity is defined in terms of purity and wholeness. And the Prophet's uh, saying, Hadith peace be upon him, of how to be true to your values and principles by also also caring and catering to others and actually stepping up um, towards that. And we were just mentioning at the end that and if we are not able to speak about it or to take action, then at least in our heart, and this connects Ali to what you mentioned, purity, wholeness, mm -hmm. at least in our heart, we know Feel we it. are displeased with that. Yeah. We know that we want um, goodness. And that is the weakest of faith because we're not acting upon it, mm -hmm. but at least we're maintaining that integrity, which I call internal yeah. integrity. And, and maybe there's a misunderstanding. Uh, when we say the weakest, it doesn't mean that should be the whole thing. Mm -hmm. you know, every time you see something wrong, oh, you just, I'll just find it as an excuse. It, yes. You know, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to do any you mm -hmm. know, act upon it. I just keep it in my heart. I feel bad about it. Yes, I feel so. We're just using it as an excuse. So yes. there is a misunderstanding. Yes, it. yes. Because it, it was placed after if you can take action well, and if you can talk. So you actually check in with yourself. Mm -hmm. Can I do something can about it? Can you do it? this? No. Next. Can I contribute in creating awareness? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then move on, move on to that. So Ali, what would you think leads to lack of integrity? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's a difficult question. <laughs> well, as I, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. uh, Lack of integrity is mainly, you know, the, it's the opposite. The, the opposite of it is hypocrisy. Uh -huh. And we talk about hypocrisy. Oh, and we have a call whatever... right now. Oh. So we'll go back to that. The tough question, yeah. <laughs> Salaamu Alaikum. Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. Salaamu Alaikum. Khalid Haribi, welcome to Let's Connect. Thank you very much. And uh, um, I'd like to... Uh, convey my congrats for all your for you and all your uh, listeners and your colleague on the last 10 days of this holy month Allah barak thank you thank you and inshallah we'll all make uh, best of it and the the ajr the rewards inshallah inshallah you know we we uh, we are as those who are faithful are very lucky that we get these opportunities to yes. renew our uh, soul and to um, search again for these uh, spiritual opportunities to to cleanse our souls and and just pray to God for everything that we want. These are very, very blessed days. Alhamdulillah, you're right, you're right. And we always feel that it just passes by like a marathon. So we are yes. to really seize the moment. Very, very, very much. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Khaled, for noting that. So today, Khaled, we're talking about integrity. And we'd love to know 
your how you define integrity and also as you have um you are a social entrepreneur as well and you know you got involved in areas of CSR and so it's it'd be interesting to also see how you see it in these different contexts it, it's an such a very uh, important and critical topic especially nowadays in our society mm-hmm. integrity integrity cannot really be very easily dis- defined beyond the uh, dictionaries you know mm-hmm. Um, if you search for it or if you look at it in books, you'll probably say something along the lines of aligning one's word with action. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's the, the book definitions of, of, of integrity. Mm-hmm. But for us as human beings, I think integrity is the most difficult thing to achieve. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is the, the balance of life. It is the reason... Um, why uh, why um, um, uh, the Almighty has created us so mm-hmm. that we can find balance yes. between our beliefs, our thoughts, what do we really think, mm-hmm. but how do we really translate that into action? Mm-hmm. Um, translating that into action takes a lot of commitment. Yes. We go on our lives believing that we are good people, that we care about our neighbors, that we love our families, mm-hmm. that we respect our friends, but in real life, we hardly call our friends. Mm-hmm. We we communicate with the families through WhatsApp. Yes. Uh, and we compete with uh, each other fiercely when we go to our work. Mm-hmm. Then do we really have the integrity that is uh, that, that is uh, our traditions, our beliefs, our um, mm-hmm. our religion is calling for? This, the it's difference between theory topic. theory and practice, and the exactly. challenge is in the practice. Yes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether we really do what we believe in, uh, that is that is all about. Um, that's what it's all about at the end. Mm-hmm. True. And so, how how would you see that someone can you know live that practice of integrity and work on that? that? And I remember one thing that has been very useful to me personally, and uh, mm-hmm. is the, meeting two people that have influenced me, and because they embodied what integrity means, mm-hmm. it is very difficult for us in life if we don't have people who mm-hmm. show us an reality, an yes. example of the values. Mm-hmm. And two role models who really embodied it, and they, this came very late in my life, to be honest, when uh-huh. I was already in my 20s. This was... A, Is that uh, late, Khaled, in life? <laughs> 20s? <laughs> Times have changed. <laughs> I'm trying to make myself uh, look uh, Young. sound younger, but I don't think it's working. Uh, uh-huh. I, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, uh, His Eminence Sheikh Ahmed Al-Khalili in an event mm, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, when I first got uh, started working in, the, uh, in 2000 and, uh, and the, his, uh, his, his humility, his uh, humble uh, behavior, his modesty, the way he was dealing with students when I was a teacher mm-hmm. and him insisting to be treated as uh, you know, uh, without uh, too much protocol, yes. it embodied for me that this is someone who I see on, on, on um, you know, so Allah and for example, mm-hmm. his program, yes. talk about integrity and humility and being kind to others. Mm-hmm. And then I saw him with my own eyes implementing those values. Mm-hmm. That's integrity. Yes, yes. Another thing is an example of uh, his, his majesty's uh, mm-hmm. teaching. Um, in, in a very landmark speech in 2012, His Majesty really emphasized one point, that the point of us working and as human jobs mm-hmm. is not for our personal gain. It's for higher purpose. It's for mm-hmm. us to embody the values that we say as humanities we are embodying. Mm-hmm. So for there are two, two choices, His Majesty. Either those who are working well and implementing the values, mm-hmm. or those who go astray and look for personal gain. Mm. And that is not what we want for our nation. Yes, so our these are two examples of how crucial Lovely. integrity is for us. So to me, that helped me in my life. To when I think of entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. it's the same thing. If you say talk about social entrepreneurship, this means that you are doing something that ultimately of a benefit to the society. Yes. So I ask myself before taking any activity, mm-hmm. am I doing this for a personal gain? Mm-hmm. Or am I doing this because I be- truly believe that I want to add value to the society? Mm-hmm. If the answer is the former, then I am I, I, uh, without integrity, I will not get anywhere. Mm-hmm. But if the answer is the latter, I'm doing this really because I believe in society and I'm doing it for the society, 
then I would go ahead. But still, we are human beings, and human beings are. Yes. And, um, mm-hmm. But the main important thing is that we know that no matter how hard it is for one to to uh, be committed to the path of integrity, mm-hmm. um, uh, not to ever feel that there is no chance of going back to the right path. We all make mistakes, but yes. we should always believe in the principle that integrity um, uh, is the main end result uh, that we will achieve uh, success by and nothing else. Beautiful, beautiful. And it, as you mentioned, it gives us ability to keep checking in on ourselves. And then maybe exactly. when we realize, oh, I didn't show integrity in this situation, then what can I learn from it? What can I do yeah. next time? Exactly. And the greatest example is fasting. Mm, yes. um, the Prophet Muhammad, والسلام, uh, peace be upon him, said, um, if one does not leave uh, the, the bad deeds and bad-mouthing others, their God does not need him to, or her to, uh, to, uh, to, be, to stay hungry all day. The reason of fasting is that we align our actions mm-hmm. with the purpose of fasting, yes. not just for us to abstain from uh, drinking and, um, and eating. And, and sleep and, during um, the day. I just I'd <laughs> like to remind all my fellow Omani and then Omani drivers in Oman that mm-hmm. when we are fasting, I hope that we remember that if every action and every behavior mm-hmm. that we all day should be aligned with the beliefs that we um, want to see in our homes, in our schools, in our work. And we hear in the Friday prayer and we hear in our prayer. Beautiful. And it's mm-hmm. very hard for myself and I imagine it's hard for everyone. Mm-hmm. But uh, I believe that integrity can be contagious and that it can uh, it can uh, it can help everybody. I love that. Let, let's spread the virus, Khalid, and support one another. <laughs> <laughs> you, that, that, that's also you. Media has plays a very important role in reinforcing these values. Inshallah, together, inshallah, everyone support, inshallah. Thank you so inshallah. much, Khalid, for inshallah. that uh, wonderful uh, contribution and reminding us of key key points. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you. you too. Uh, it's beautiful. Khad reminds us that it's about connecting back as well constantly with the purpose, intention, mm-hmm. and keep on checking in on ourselves because, and it's, yes, it is challenging. There's a situation where we might not have acted as we wanted, but we keep reminding ourselves. And uh, Ali, were mentioning as well, so what makes us fall into the lack of integrity in certain situations? Yeah. One of them would be uh, uh, selfishness uh, or being greedy. For example... Now, I want to <clears throat> have a lot of money and I'm willing to do anything, you know, even go the wrong way in order to get money. And I'll share with you something. If you if, if you are a businessman uh, with integrity, you might connect to this situation mm-hmm. where when you try to market your business in a company, you find people come to you and ask for money. You know, if, if they provided help in getting you the business in the company that they're working in. So it's it's like bribing the man so he could get you the business mm-hmm. yeah I'm from you know, internally I'll be able to help you to get into the business mm-hmm. and it's happening a lot and maybe some people don't even understand you know this this is wrong mm-hmm. you know okay this he's a friend he's helping me and all that it sounds nice however if there's something behind that you know I'm okay give me a little bit you know you mm-hmm. scratch my back I scratch yours mm-hmm then that is lack of integrity. We have a call. We'll be back on that. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Let's Connect. What's your name? Oh, my name is Fatihia. Fatihia? Yeah. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm okay. Ramadan Korean for everybody. Thank you. Ramadan mm-hmm. Mubarak. Thank you very much. So we're talking about integrity today. What are your thoughts? Mm-hmm. Um, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Because we keep been talking about that we can impact our around us people and everything. Uh-huh. But what about those people that you're trying hard to change them or to advise them? Mm-hmm. And they keep telling telling that none of your business. Okay. So what are you going to do after that? Okay. I mean, what if your friend or your best friend, brother or sisters, you look at them, they're doing something wrong. And mm-hmm. you know that is wrong. Mm-hmm. And uh, you keep in telling them like, oh, brother or sister... This is wrong. What have you done? And they keep telling that not your business. Okay. Uh, uh, we can do something else more than advice. I mean, mm-hmm. react, reaction, or anything. Okay. Well, we can share our thoughts on that quickly because uh, on a different note. 
But uh, mm -hmm. so you you personally feel that um, that you wanting to someone else wants to change, but you're not able to influence that. Exactly, because uh, it's just in real life. Mm -hmm. I have a I have a friend, and um, they are my best friends. I mean, we we grew up together, mm -hmm. and like my sisters, mm -hmm. and I know that they're doing something wrong, mm -hmm. and I try hard to advise them. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm not sure. I mean, they keep telling me like. This is my own life. Um, not your business. Mm -hmm. I'm doing right. You're saying wrong. Okay. Um, Islam is not like in a tough way. Mm -hmm. Don't be uh, so specifically to say that you have to do this. You don't have to do that. Okay. I mean, they keep saying that. Don't push something against something else. Yes. I mean, thank you. you know, thank you, know you for I mean. your call. Well, well, we'll share with you briefly what our, our thoughts are then. Thank, thank you for connecting with us. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Have a lovely much. day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, 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 we can quickly touch upon that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I would say is the way I personally would perceive it is that I'm not there to change someone, that I don't have the power to change someone, mm -hmm. but that we hope that by our example, uh, by what we stand for, we can inspire another. And ultimately, um, it's under Allah's will if that person changes or not. Mm -hmm. And everyone is responsible for themselves. Everyone is responsible mm -hmm. for the change. And some people choose differently. And I believe as well when we speak about advice, that's a big context as well. And sometimes advice can be given in a way that a person feels it's enforced, mm -hmm. it's imposed, and it's making the person feel like you are wrong. And usually anyone would repel from that. They don't like to feel that, oh, you make me feel that I am wrong. And at times for me is that to accept the person, mm -hmm. accept that they have chosen differently and to communicate in a gentle way mm -hmm. and to, and not to advice is not always by just saying, saying, but if that person sees you living that, it might perhaps inspire them. And in the end, it's, it's within their hands to change. What are your thoughts, Adi? Well, all I could say is, uh, you know, start by being wise when you deal with people and speak to people. Mm -hmm. You use wisdom when you talk to people. And uh, uh, if, you, if you go back to the story of Prophet Muhammad, I, I mean, he's, he's done da'wah. He's been talking to his family, his friends. And uh, there are many of his, his family themselves. They didn't listen to him. Yes, they didn't accept. They, they didn't yes. accept. In fact, they fought him. Yes. Yeah, they even tried to murder him. Mm. But uh, he didn't stop. He mm -hmm. he just because he had this message, you know, he 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 had this message that he wanted to share with people. Mm -hmm. uh, and his message was, you know, to 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 take people out of hell into the paradise, mm -hmm. yeah. To protect them for, from the hellfire. That was his message. Mm -hmm. So he tried his best. He tried with his own wisdom that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala has given him. But then for some people he said, "Okay, you have what you believe in mm -hmm. and I have what I believe in." Yes. You do your best, you do whatever you can from your side, and then that's it. If that person wants to listen or not, at least he received, he or she has received the message. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's take another example, Prophet Noah. Mm -hmm. Noah, alayhi salam, Noah. It took him about 950 years mm -hmm. you know, doing da'wah, and only a few people listened to him, very few. Mm -hmm. And who are we to compare? Yes, yes. And yeah. it reminds us, you know, when we face these situations, it's an opportunity to look into ourselves as well, mm -hmm. into how we are, you know, our value of patience as well, our value of tolerance, mm -hmm. um, of, of acceptance, and of recognizing that the choice is within that person's hand, mm -hmm. and we're not there to enforce. We just want out of goodwill to mm -hmm. share, to set a positive example. Uh, and you never know, maybe that person later will May come around. Exactly. Let's, yes. And it happened. There are stories of people who listened, you know, to someone talking about them, you know, about the truth and everything. Mm -hmm. But they were so stubborn. 20 years later, they said, yes, now I become a better person because 20 years back, there was this guy who came to me mm -hmm. and told me this and this and that. Mm -hmm. So it maybe it doesn't affect that time because at the end, it's, yes. you know, Hidayah comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The yes. guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to maintain kindness. I think that's yeah. very important that all humans, we like to be treated with kindness. I mean, if someone comes and tells me, for example, something input or feedback mm -hmm. I like it to be done in also a respectable way exactly. and that's human interaction but never give up Let me just never give up you try your best whatever you can never give up mm. uh, so we move on to we were talking about integrity mm -hmm. yes yes 
Yeah, uh, I've talked about selfishness and greedy. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one, uh, which is you know the environment. You mm -hmm. get you get affected by the environment around you. Who were your friends? You know who are your friends? And what about your family? It all starts from home. Mm -hmm. When I say home, I mean children. And now when I talk about children, uh, that itself is a mm -hmm. you know, another kind of a, a topic that we need to deal with. Mm -hmm. And teaching your children good values and integrity is one of the gifts that you can give them that they will keep for the rest of their lives. Integrity is something that never goes out of style. Although it can sometimes seem like you know the world can be lacking in it, by teaching your children integrity, you will not only be making their lives better, but you will be improving the life of everybody who comes in contact with your child, both now and in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Tim uh, Kimmel, Kimmel said, Integrity is an uphill marathon, not a sprint. It's something once taught, forever caught. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so it all comes from childhood. And, I like and, the uphill example. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And it, it also shows me the concept that Yes, it is hard work. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it has challenges, but it keeps you moving forward. And I'd like us as well to reflect on things that sometimes can lead us to, you know, not to be in that concept of integrity without us realizing it. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes perhaps over promising, sometimes out of excitement or we're discussing someone that we end up promising, oh, yes, this and this and that. Mm -hmm. And so... The person didn't mean to fall into the, you know, the concept of lacking their integrity when they didn't meet that promise. Mm -hmm. But it's because of that excitement, we overpromised. And I think that's, as Khaled mentioned, that challenge is you keep constantly checking in on yourself, mm -hmm. knowing when to say no to something that you cannot do. Mm -hmm. And that stems from your self-awareness of yeah. your capacity, um, of your capability, and also the concept of amana. Mm. which is very, very important constant in Islam in terms of trust. When someone entrusts you with something, mm -hmm. it could be something physical mm -hmm. that that person gave you, or it can be a secret, or it yeah. can be you know information that the person wants you to keep. That's a trust itself. Mm -hmm. That's a sense of um, integrity. And another thing is when we come to make decisions, mm -hmm. is again, we need to check in. Um, am I doing it out of this personal motive? Am I really you know, acting upon what I preach, mm -hmm. that, you know, I want to deliver value. To, am I really doing that? And there's a concept as well, Ali, of Ihsan in Arabic, mm -hmm. which is attaining excellence. Mm -hmm. And Ihsan is idea at your work, you know, you do to your best ability to perfect the job. Mm -hmm. and that is a sense of integrity. That is a sense of excellence. Mm -hmm. It's not about, all right, done, done, done. And then the, there's, there isn't the quality in, in the job. There isn't quality in the outcome. So these elements, I personally see them as where majority of us might fall short one context or another. Mm -hmm. And to be aware of that keeps us checked in constantly. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about integrity in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Integrity is one of the fundamental values that employers seek in the employees that hire. We have a call and we'll be back All to right. work. Integrity at work. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaykum, Azar Welcome to Let's Connect. Thank you very much for having me with you today. Well, thank you very much. And mashallah, Umrah maqbula, because you just came from uh, Umrah. <laughs> Umrah maqbula. Yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Ameen, ameen, alhamdulillah. So thank you for making the time to uh, contribute with us. We're talking about uh, integrity. And mashallah, you're also the founder of United Schools. Um, mm -hmm. The field of education is very important. Oftentimes when we talk about values, we go back to children, education, and would love to know as well your views on integrity and how it's conveyed to the students in school. Okay. I think uh, the word integrity uh, mm -hmm. become really like very common during mm -hmm. the uh, last decade. Many people, you go to different organizations, the first thing you see, a list of values, and perhaps mm -hmm. the first value on this list will be like integrity. I see, yes. And I feel like many people using it as uh, prestigious as well, not only like value. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, co uh, to convince people that you really like, I mean, uh, uh, a high standard person, you use that word. But to me, I think integrity is not a value. It's more than a value. Mm -hmm. It's a way of living. 
Yes. So for us in in the education, we're trying to instill these values in a different way. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, a recent example, we had a meeting with our teachers, the Arabic medium teachers, mm-hmm. and these are all the teachers who teaching Arabic, Islamic, social studies. And we decided, like, we want to change the Islamic subject. We don't want to call it a subject because what we feel is you call something value or a subject, it does not get implemented. Mm-hmm. It, it becomes, like like I said, it's a list. It's something just to show. Mm-hmm. So to us, I think integrity, especially integrity. I mm-hmm. mean, we are in uh, the, the holy month of Ramadan. Yes. And if we remember the um, events, when uh, the Arabs wanted to move uh, Hajar al-Aswad, the mm-hmm. black stone, yes. to Ta'aba. Yes. Every tribe wanted to get the owner to move that uh, stone. Mm-hmm. But then they decide, like, okay, let's uh, get the advice from the first person who will come. And it happened that Prophet Muhammad was the first mm-hmm. person, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They all said we agreed on him. Because of what? Because of his integrity, al-Sadiq al-Amin, al-Amin. Yes. So I really think, you know, it has to be not a value, but it has to be like a way of living. Mm. So for us in uh, United Private Schools, we, we do focus on values, but we want to make it as a daily practice. Mm-hmm. So going back to that, uh, I was talking about uh, recently, we decided we wanted to change the subject of Islamic studies. And it's not a subject, it's something we really want to implement it. Mm-hmm. So we decided, like, for example, all the Arabic mediums, uh, teachers, every lesson, they will start the first five minutes talking about one topic. And because we only uh, started this last term, uh-huh. just before uh, closing the school, we focused on the Salah uh, prayers. Okay. So, yeah, I think uh, if we talk about values nowadays with the kids, we they need to see us practicing them more than talking about these values. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So you actually put a system in place where you kind of integrated that before each lesson, you give time for these things, character building elements, improvements. Yes, because, mm-hmm. yes, absolutely. Two years back, we started to put a curriculum and we said we want a values uh, curriculum. But then we thought uh, we, we, we are, we're not really implementing it fast enough. Uh-huh. So we thought, okay, let's make it like every lesson and let's, let's practice it. Mm. So if we talk about one value, we'll, we'll spend like six weeks on the same value, but then we ensure that every child practicing that value. Beautiful, beautiful. That's, that's a wonderful example because oftentimes we say that uh, education should prepare you for life um, mm. rather than just uh, you know, feeding uh, information. And that's a beautiful example of you actually taking time to explore each of these uh, principles and how students can apply them. So how, how did students interact with that? Positively. Mm-hmm. Um, I really think students, they like these things. They just need to be guided. Yes. I mean, we had a lot of like, I mean, if we look into like uh, UPS results for this year, for example, we, we managed to get the first prizes in a lot of competitions mm-hmm. because we run these values uh, curriculum along with the academic subject. Oh, yes. I mean, in Quran competition, we managed to get 50% of uh, Oman prizes Mashallah. went to UPS mm. students, mm-hmm. but also in uh, Arabic competition, social studies. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I, I really think the values, when it's aligned with the academic, you just feel the, the children, they become so proud. Mashallah. And mm. it, um, it helped them um, achieve better results. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I have a question. Uh, um, what uh, do you do? You get any feedback from the parents of the children? I mean, how how they behave yes. at home? I think one of the main reasons why children choosing our school because it it it's known now as the school of akhlaq, madaris al akhlaq, where mm-hmm. we really of focus morals. on values as well as academic. It's not only academic because we think today parents are really busy. Mm-hmm. Every parent say, "I'm busy. I don't have time to." Uh, so we we tend to forget teaching the kids the values. Mm-hmm. Simple stuff like um, eating habits. Yes. Yani very rare you will see students nowadays sitting and do the uh, eating habits the way uh, Prophet Muhammad taught us to do it. Mm-hmm. Like okay. he said the prayers first and call me mal- yalik. And so we, we started to implement these things and it's, parents really like it and enjoy uh, uh, They feel that we mm-hmm. really do a part that they were supposed to do, but we focus on doing it more mm-hmm. in the school. SubhanAllah. And even because parents are concerned with today's challenges, distractions, mm. and, and so you're, you're building that inner moral guidance within them. Yes. 
Yeah. SubhanAllah. Thank you so much. Uh, any final remarks you'd like to share? Um, thank you very much for having me. Thank you, yeah, thank, thank you, and uh, all the best okay. to the school. If I could go back in time, I'll go to that school. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> Future generation, <laughs> inshallah. inshallah. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Adasmai. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Shukran, yeah. shukran. Yeah. Um, th- so, that's beautiful because if we start from a young age mm-hmm. to learn to live this practice, it's much easier. Mm-hmm. But of course, it's not too late if, you know, later on as adults, we realize, oh, you know, I really need to live these values. Mm-hmm. We can start now. I think the more we can start now, but it's beautiful to start at a young age as well. Yeah, and I have a few uh, tips uh, mm-hmm. that, that can be used at home for children. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm not a parent yet, but... So, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, one of the things that encourage truthfulness. Mm-hmm. Uh, never ask your children to lie for you. Uh, for example, when you hear a, a doorbell, mm-hmm. ding dong, oh, tell him I'm not here, I'm not here. Yes. So you're already teaching them to lie. Uh, another one is set a good example and yeah, model it yourself. Mm-hmm. If you tell your child you're going to do something, always strive to keep your word. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one is to apologize when you wrong your child. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't feel bad about it. This will teach your child to act the same mm-hmm. if he and she does it. Yes. Uh, never tolerate even uh, the, the smallest lie. Example, even when the child says that he ate his sandwich when he actually threw it away. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, you have to be careful about that. Never allow your children to be disrespectful or rude to you, the parents. Mm-hmm. This will teach them to be rude to others outside the house. And uh, last tip, I would say, tell them stories about people with integrity mm-hmm. and that they are the heroes or superheroes. So, so the children can actually try and learn those qualities and maybe start copying them a little bit. Oh, yes. Actually, stories do have uh, a great In, impact, impact when yeah. you... I mean, we, like, we all like stories. Mm-hmm. Um, but likewise, children, we share these with them. They, they keep reflecting on it. And it's also important, I believe, to clarify, especially when children, with, when it comes to their grades and their school performance, is that integrity is more important than success as defined mm. by the parent because sometimes you know a child doesn't want to share that they got certain grades mm, yeah uh, and you know <laughs> and they start learning how to sign like their father so. <laughs> <laughs> or changing the grade so it again it is challenging but when you create nurture that sense of integrity that okay we can improve next time what it is and not attacking mm-hmm. you know one another because ah, it's wrong and it, it kind of brings me as well to Fatih when she called is that even if we see Perhaps someone's doing that something that we might not agree with. We shouldn't as well kind of you know enforce it or attack it or in, that doesn't work actually. It repels us from each other. Mm-hmm. You know, we we want to connect on a on a beautiful platform of human interaction. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. allows us to open up to each other and to learn from each other. That's what's called wisdom and beautiful yes. preaching, I could say. Alhamdulillah. I want to remind. Um, mentioned something that Azza spoke about mm-hmm. and just to highlight it um, where she mentioned that the Prophet peace be upon him was known as uh, Al-Ameen, al siddiq you know the dependable one, the mm-hmm. truthful and it's beautiful to reflect on that even before the announcement of his prophethood mm-hmm. he had these titles Yeah. so yeah. these titles of Al-Ameen, the dependable one the siddiq the truthful you know, even way before you know the prophethood came and was announced these are qualities that mm-hmm. he had mm-hmm. and, and people knew him to be as the truthful one. So mm-hmm. I think that's, you know, beautiful core characteristics uh, of the prophet that he had. Yeah. I mean, there are people who, who don't, he d- didn't believe in him and, and yet they entrusted their belongings. Because they knew actually, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and they knew he was truthful. He, he taught lots of his followers to, you know, avoid all situations that may push them to be untruthful, mm-hmm. you know, such as, and if you think about this, you say, oh, even this, such as borrowing money, which they may find difficult to repay. Uh, one of his usual prayers would be to seek refuge from Allah, with Allah from being in debt. Um, a companion once said, Oh, Allah's Messenger, very often you seek refuge with Allah from being in debt. Mm-hmm. And the Prophet ﷺ answered, If a person is in debt, he tells lies when he speaks and breaks the promises he makes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, things that we don't Lacking. think about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and not just that, even animals. You know, once uh, one of his companions, Alayhi was trying to at- mm-hmm. uh, to attract a horse with a false gesture of promise. So the Prophet ﷺ told him not to do that. He said, "Stop deceiving animals 
Instead, be trustworthy with them. Mm-hmm. Even animals. Yes. Come on. Yes. Of yeah. course. I mean, you you buy them with food, and they come, and then you don't give them. That's a sign of. That's why he's yes. an amin. Yeah. yeah. Trustworthy. Yeah. And it's it's beautiful because integrity is first of all, in terms of integrity towards our Creator, our God. So even when we worship, mm-hmm. um, how truthful are we? Yeah. And He knows what our intention is. But again, it reminds us that even in acts of worship, mm-hmm. we are to, to keep checking in on our intention. Uh, it's very important that we don't take it for granted or be complacent because it's very easy for us to slip. Mm-hmm. It's very easy for us. We we think the moment I think we tell ourselves, oh, I got it all right. My intentions are on track. I think that's when we start falling. Mm-hmm. And so it's important that we need to keep checking in on ourselves towards our creator, how truthful we are mm-hmm. and towards his creation, which yeah. includes humans, animals, environment as well. Mm-hmm. And back to integrity in workplace. Mm -hmm. Uh, Individuals who show integrity in the workplace not only understand right from wrong, but they practice it all they do. Uh, This is beneficial in a business environment where trustworthy uh, actions set the foundation for successful business relationship. Mm -hmm. Uh, Treating others the way you want to be treated is the core principle of the golden rule and an example of how workers can display integrity in the workplace. Uh, the golden rule is uh, a reflection of respect to others. Mm-hmm. So that pays like a big attention to it. Um, and integrity, integrity action takes integrity to be the alignment of uh, four factors, actually. And they are accountability, mm-hmm. competence, ethics, and corruption control. Uh, when I say accountability, is the ability of key stakeholders to check that we do what we say we do. Mm-hmm. You know, we got mission, vision, and all that. So are we doing that? Are we performing it? Mm-hmm. And number two, which is competence. Competence is the ability to do something well. If an organization doesn't deliver good infrastructure, healthcare, or education, for example, it would not ultimately be acting with integrity. Mm-hmm. Number three, which is ethics. We define ethics as behaving with honor and public purpose. It is about engaging with values and issues such as the environment, access to justice, uh, public infrastructure. And uh, fourth, which is corruption control. Corruption is a factor that undermines organizational in- integrity. Mm-hmm. It is the abuse of entrusted power for private gain. Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah. Now, imagine a scenario that a CEO asks um, their staff to take a 10% pay cut. Mm-hmm. What would you think it will be perceived? Hmm. <laughs> hmm there you go, that answers it. <laughs> yes? Oh. What would you think of it? I don't know what you think about it. You tell me. <laughs> Answering with a question? Smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. If that CEO of the company kept the employees up to date mm-hmm. on, say, the struggles of the business and that, that the business was experiencing and shared clear and frequent communication at team meetings, mm-hmm. the employees will feel that they know exactly what is happening. So there's clarity. And as a result, they won't feel that they're blindsided by the CEO's request if he mentions as a solution that one of the things we need to do is temporarily accept, say, a 10% pay cut so that the company could avoid layoffs. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the idea here is that, you know, here's the same scenario, that same CEO could have conveyed the same message. But if one CEO conveyed it without enabling clarity, mm-hmm. and let's say he has integrity, and he is doing it to avoid layoffs, mm-hmm. and he is doing it um, to ensure that the staff are maintained, uh, and to go through the struggle. However, if he didn't communicate and keep them up to date and clarify, Mm-hmm. people's perception will be confusion. Yeah. And so part of integrity as well, again, is to be truthful as well in communicating the situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes, you know, perhaps management might feel, oh, no, this is only a management issue. Um, we're not there to inform the staff. But if you inform them that, okay, we're kind of going through such and such situation right now, mm-hmm. we might have to take some certain measures, people connect with that. And people will feel that they were involved and respected Mm -hmm. so it's again it's about yes internal integrity and externally as well how you reach out to Mm -hmm. others and i think this is something that we use in our workshops you know when we talk about different personalities Mm -hmm. and then we ask each personality you know to to be the ceo of a company Mm -hmm. and then have such questions you know i'm going to cut 10 percent or whatever Mm -hmm. so how are they going to deal with 
and different personalities have different ways of speaking to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of them will give you the whole detail of you know what's going to happen, you know what you're going to get in return mm-hmm. for for that cut. Some of them will just speak and say, "Okay, we're going to cut 10%." And they, they that's it. Mm-hmm. They don't say anything in return. But people won't connect with that. They, they won't, won't feel the they integrity. They won't. In fact, they start reacting to yes, that person yes and say no we don't want it. and they start shouting at him yes so you, you as a ceo you must be clear with what you're saying you mm. when you get when you uh, try to talk about a challenge or a problem try to find as many solutions as you can something mm. that you can back up with mm-hmm. but of course you, you have to be honest with it no? yes. don't don't just create it for the sake of you know quiet you know stay staying quiet or anything like that and mm-hmm. not reacting to you no be honest whatever you're going to say is exactly what you're going to do it's a promise you know and it applies to various uh, interactions yeah you, yes. you keep your promise when you make promises you just keep them and uh, and that actually takes me to uh, how to build character through integrity mm-hmm. in which one of them is actually to make promises and keep them when okay. you when you do not follow through your promises you have lost you know you have lost focus and may fail in fulfilling your responsibilities mm-hmm. so you need to do that uh, you need to develop your accountability learn to admit when you've made a mistake that you have actually made it even if you made part of it mm-hmm. yeah uh, choose a set of rules morals or principles that you believe will lead to happy or satisfying life mm-hmm. you know be conscious every day of the decisions that you make yeah oh those are a few of the things that I would share beautiful beautiful and it's uh, also worthy to know that if integrity it's a quality that people know they can depend on you rely on you it doesn't necessarily mean that you openly share all your privacy all your matters mm-hmm. that's that's being open that doesn't necessarily mean integrity you can be open and be truthful about your private matters mm-hmm. but can people count on you exactly. can they be reliable on you can you do you make decisions based on uh, win win so to wrap up ali building a reputation of integrity takes years but it takes only a second to lose so mm-hmm. never allow yourself to ever do anything that would damage your integrity. Beautiful. Thank you very much Ali. Indeed, it's an ongoing journey, a lifetime journey to keep checking in on ourselves and I believe that the more we keep checking in, the more we can elevate our sense of integrity and become even better and better inshallah. So, with that note, this is Reem Audia along with Al Farai and studio engineer Safiya Al Habsi. We send you peace and love and may integrity shine in all context of your life. Ma'a salama. Radio Sultan of Oman 90.4 FM is all set to bring you Let's Connect. Let's Connect. A soul searching program which is about a journey of self discovery hosted by Reem 12 noon to 1 p.m. Sunday to Thursday. Send your questions to 90406 or call us at 246-02058. Let's connect here on the Na-